Hey, how is everyone doing today? So in today's video, we have an update on the Analog Pocket. This is version 1.1 beta 5. So we're still in the betas, hopefully within the next, before the end of the year, hopefully we uh, finally get an actual update. It's not beta, but that being said, uh, sorry, I haven't been really updating, uploading too much. I've been busy between work and life and everything else that comes between it. But I've been able to play my, my Pocket more thanks to traveling more. So I guess that's uh, the plus side. I get to hang out in my pocket a little bit more. But other than that, we're going to talk about the update. I'm going to show you on the computer what the update entails. Then we're going to bring it back here. and I'm just going to show it to you on the Unlocked Pocket. Now, I don't believe this is going to be taking too long of a video since this will just be primarily focusing on two parts of the updates that I can really show you. And that's really going to be prevalent to everybody else's everyday life. So without that being said, Let's get into the video, but first make sure you leave a like, subscribe, do all that good YouTube stuff, and thank you, and let's continue. All right, so here we are, now we're on the computer side. So just like all the prior updates, you can use the updater, which I'm planning on doing a separate video when I have more time, but this is right now, the immediate. So let's go to the firmware, you go to support, you go to pocket, and here it is, version beta, version 1.1 beta 5, so let's, Let's uh, let's view the release. Here we're going to go over at least what we have as the release notes. So, and it looks like there were several things which I am very interested in checking out. The button mapping is a big one. Organizing is another big one because right now my cores are all over the place, especially because I try out different ones. But let's go through it real quick. So, the release notes we have for OS: added open FPGA categories toggled by groups. That's awesome. So that's, I can't wait for that. Using user can quickly navigate the catalogs, platforms, lists with the resume browser setting. Cool. Added pre-core button mapping via the OS. So that's a big one. I don't know if uh, the cores need to be updated for that to work or if it'll just work automatically. But we'll uh, we'll see when I try that out. And they fix USB link menu bug. Okay, so that's a, that's just a bug fix. All right, uh, a PF. They've added chip 32 automatic reinitialization via JTAG. Added 32 uh, 32 uh, sorry chip 32 cycle limited during crash. Added th chip 32 full instruction. Uh, added logging to exam to explain why the data slot may not have been saved. So it looks like they've added a bunch of stuff regarding chip 32. Execute a halt with B button. So they definitely added a few stuff just by the looks of it. Yeah, it looks like they definitely added a few stuff. Um, yeah, a lot of it was chip 32. For the system, they fixed uh, boot to open FPGA resume issue while docked. So that's a docked issue. But it looks like the biggest thing is going to be organizing and the button maps. So that's what I'm most interested in seeing. I can't wait to check it out. Uh, so now what we're going to do is I'm just going to update it real quick. You know, you download it and you just drag and drop and then you let it run. It's fairly simple. So let me go update it now and then I will come back. I will, I'll show you on the uh, pocket how it looks. Okay, so we're back. Now let's just uh, get my cartridge out of the way. So now as you can tell, let's just go to the about just to... So really bring it home. As you can see, this is version 1.1 beta 5. And the good thing about all this stuff is that they always put you uh, put the update here too. So you can biggest thing you can see you can group. That's probably my biggest thing. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to see the button mapping here. I think I'm gonna have to do updates to the cores, but we'll see. We'll check it out. We'll see what um what we can do. I'll try uh, SNES and see how maybe we can play around with it there. It's always cool that they include all of the. Uh, the release notes here as well, but I'll also do the release notes in the description below in case you guys want to see it there too. So let's go to the pocket here. First, let's start from the settings. Okay. So first thing you're going to want to do is go to settings, go to analog OS and make sure you select group open FPGA. This will automatically group it. Now, I'm guessing there's a little bit more to it also when it comes with the cores. They're probably going to have to have something already there saying it's a home console, handheld, etc. But let's check it out. So, 
open FPGA is already grouped and it looks beautiful, <laughs> much more organized. One thing I will notice is that Neo Geo is for some reason uncategorized, so that just might need an update just to select it. Uh, but let me see, let's go to the about. Let's see, category, see? They left the category blank. So that's probably what it's gonna have to be. If you go to here, it's a home console. Same thing with SNES, they put it as a home console. And the same thing with all the handhelds. It's a, it's a handheld, so, you know, kind of gives it away what the category is. So that, I can see that going away with an update, not being too much of an issue. Now, maybe what I would like to see is us having the ability. I wonder if I can, I don't think, maybe that's something I can do on my own, but I might need to do it on the computer. See, this one has it on console. But these are also home consoles. So this, and this should be grouped together. This would have been eight, what, five, six altogether. You have the arcade stuff right there. But all right, that is the biggest thing so far that I see. Let's try SNES real quick. I was playing Chrono Trigger. Uh, let's go do Castlevania. Let's see if I can mess with the mapping. Like I mentioned, I don't really foresee this video going too long. Those are the biggest things that I would say everybody's going to notice. Oh, okay. I don't know if that was there before, but uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess you can change it. I'm not 100% sure if that was always the case. Uh, but you can definitely change it now. Put it back to default, which will make it easier too. Might come in handy. Let's try, uh, what's a good one? Neo Geo might be a good one. And it's gonna take forever to load something. Uh, okay, let's just do Metal Slug. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, the first Metal Slug doesn't take as long. But so far, SNES, you can change the controls. So that's good. You can group it. So this is a definitely a welcome update for the experience overall. Like I mentioned earlier, they have some chip 32 uh, changes and all that. Those are all a lot of internal stuff you might not really notice, but something like just categorizing is pretty cool. Maybe I'll just have to play around with it to figure out if I can make those changes myself in case you will, might want to categorize it yourself instead of relying on the person who released the course. So let's see. So you can't change it here. So I feel like this is an option that's gonna have to be reliant on the cores, the people who port the uh, cores over to the analog pocket. But so far, I don't see any issues with it. Uh, you know what, just as a good test, I tested that one, I tested Neo Geo. Let's just run, run through a couple of these. This one has already has a couple of games. Okay, now this one always gave me issues. After I updated, this one did give me issues. Okay, let's go back. Uh, let's go to consoles. Genesis. Toy Story. Just see if any of the cores have issues with this update. Nope. Cool. Genesis is good. Let's go to Master System. Put some music going on. Let's hear it. Cool, awesome. Let's go to the next one. Bomber Jack. No issue. Oh, no, memory's still there, that's good. Uh, handhelds, Game Boy. Let's run Pokemon Red. Let's do GB, let's use GB Bios. That's awesome, I, I still like that, it starts like that. Just like my DMG game where it's awesome. Okay. It's also a good way to get the original color if that's what you're looking for. But with a nice backlit screen, man. It's awesome. Makes me want to play it now. Uh, okay, let's go to Game Boy Advance. Just going to go in order. I've been playing Rocket Edition recently. It's a ROM hack. It's actually pretty cool. If I wanted to... Uh, play as Team Rocket and go around battling and stealing people's Pokemon. This is a cool way to go. All right, looks like this is not having any issues. And if you guys are interested in, I can try to do ROM hack videos 
two. I haven't done one of those in a while. I'm trying to think about doing that for uh, for the Game Boy. No, sorry, for the Super Nintendo. Let's try. Uh, this is going to be Game Boy Color. That brings me back to my childhood. It's awesome. Okay, that one works. What else do we have left? Game Gear. We still have a few left. But Game Gear, let's go to... Can I organize this better myself? Let's see. Okay. That works. Let's go, let's go to the major ones. I said the game gear ready. Home consoles already did. There's a new update for this. No, there's another version of this as NES. I gotta gotta check out as well. There we go. Awesome. That works. I think that was the last one. Uncategorized. I already did Neo Geo and I did Super Nintendo. All right. It looks like this is a good update. I like the organization, the button mapping. Um, looks like we're going to have to have a couple core updates just to really uh, utilize the mapping and all that stuff. But uh, I can't wait till that comes. But other than that, looks like everything is going good so far. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you on the next one.